having successfully launched three businesses, bilingual mum to two and entrepreneur Antonia Bozan Brown has connected with thousands of people, both French and international, since moving to the French Riviera. These connections allow her to speak with successful local businesses and inspirational people about life here on the Côte d'Azur and share it with you. Welcome to the Riviera Firefly podcast with your host, entrepreneur, and my mum, Antonia Bozan Brown. Welcome, Riviera Fireflies, to episode 36, Settling Into Life in France. Well, if you listen back to the back catalogue of interviews with over 20 of my guests, you'll hear that I often ask the question, how did they meet people here? Now, there's a real reason for this. It's because in my free community group, Cot Does Your Living, I have a couple of questions that people need to answer before they get admitted into the group. And it's in here that I see very often people are either moving to the area or they've been here for a while and they'd like to make some friends. And it's happening again and again. And it made me realise that there are lots of people that have just moved here. And I remember back to our own early days here. And that was probably before Facebook, to be fair. But it can be quite lonely and it can be very challenging. And so I wanted to share in this podcast couple of tips that we have had through our guests and in the community group and share them with you. So we're going to be covering things like how to save money, uh, what people think about language tips, how to meet people and make friends, ways to find jobs, find a house or sell your house and also what to do when you're looking for schools, kids activities and of course things that you could do with animals too. So we're going to talk first about learning the language. Well, what many of my guests felt was that it was super important to get into French as quickly as possible. Ideally, before you leave your home country and arrive in France, because you're going to need it from the moment you land. Even though in the Côte d'Azur, there are many, many people that do speak really good English. I think it just gives you really good self-confidence and also allows you to integrate with all those people that don't speak English. So sign up for the language lessons once you're here. I do find it quite sad to see how people are isolated, basically, because they're lacking in the confidence and they're not able to integrate and maybe meet with their neighbours, particularly if they're out in the countryside. There are some local free classes or nearly free classes in most areas, actually. Try and make an effort because uh, your French is actually going to be, in many cases, much better than some people's English. Uh, Here's a little tip I have is when I first got here, I used to do a little run through before I pick the phone up to speak to someone. So be it uh, to book an appointment at the dentist or the mechanics, I'd run through a little bit and I definitely noted down keywords in French on a pad so that I had something that I could refer back to if things got a bit dicey on the phone. And I also learned how to say to people, could they go slower, please? So lentement and doucement which literally means to calm down, (laughs) calm down. So (laughs) I used to have those phrases uh, ready because sometimes people would just forget about it. You know, Uh, even now when I sometimes call a call centre, maybe you've hit the call centre because you phoned up about an insurance issue. And I sort of say to them, I am English, but could they speak slower, please? Because sometimes they just don't think about it. They're not being nasty or anything. It's just they they haven't truly grasped that you're having to translate technical vocabulary back into your own language and rephrase things and try and come up with a response. So I actually said (laughs) once, I have said I'm not stupid. It's just that I didn't learn this vocabulary in French at school. And that generally makes them laugh because they think back to their school days and think, well, no, I probably didn't learn all the the vocabulary around insurance and parts of a car in English when they were at school. So it usually works and it kind of shows a human side to you and you connect with them on a human way. I must say there is a plus side, actually, uh, when you do get a sales call at home or on my mobile, which uh, always seems to be weak. I'm never going to use them because of their constant spamming on my mobile phone. But anyway, when we do get those calls that arrive at home, I tend to speak in my very heavy French accent or I just speak in English and uh, answer the phone in English and they want to speak to the homeowner and I'm just like, no, no speak, 
no speak French and they, they hang up quick enough. So that's a really great tip if you want to get rid of sales calls at home. Mr. Beebe, he, he was at IBM and worked there when we first arrived. And at that time, they actually had a very English approach to uh, to life in the workplace because I guess it's a global and an American company. And so actually documentation had to be in English uh, that they so that they were then able to share it with their global partners. And even in meetings, if people present in a meeting or on a call, a conference call, were English, everyone then had to switch into English, even if 99% of the people in the room were French. So this was actually nice for him when he first arrived, but actually not brilliant for his French. Luckily, he prevailed and he kind of insisted on speaking to people in French because they sort of were treating him a little bit like a free English lesson, I think, as well. So he made an effort to go to lunch with the team and took their teasing about food very bravely and on the nose and just kept practicing and practicing his French with them to the point now. I mean, he came over to France. He had no French, really. But people now think he's a uh, French Canadian. <laughs> he's got to that level now. And that's in part down to our French surname, which is actually from my side. But anyway, um, they think that it's his side, obviously, naturally. And uh, because of a bit of an accent or maybe some mispronunciation of words, he comes across as uh, a French Canadian. So anyway, the point here is sign up for the language and practice, practice, practice get out there, use it in the boulangerie, in the in the mechanics, in the libraries, wherever you're going, do your best to think about what you're going to be saying before you get there, practice it in your head, write those things down in French and do join these local free groups and nearly free groups to get your French up to speed. Next tip is I think that you need to be positive. I think it's really easy for us to as newcomers to a foreign country to knock the French way because we are comparing it to the land we left behind. And I think if we're honest, many of us aren't really planning on going back at least for a long while. So we need to be positive and embrace the culture and the way of life that we have kind of adopted and come to enjoy. I know that of course there are issues as with anywhere in the world and I also can hold my hand up and say I've definitely been at fault for criticising things. And I, I think there is a place for criticising too. I think it's probably uh, uh, one of the reasons that we hear we can help improve things. And so it will be difficult to entirely stop. But I am trying to start the day with some positive mantras. So looking out of the windows, watching the sunrise and being thankful that we live in such a gorgeous country getting out and about and enjoying the local life, trying to think of three things a day that we love about being here. Now, of course, there's many, many more, but I just wanted to be mindful and take that moment. Actually, for me, it's not the sunrises. So on my 20 minute drive to work, there are only actually two sets of traffic lights. This is one of my I love living here things. Traffic rolls so freely as long as I miss the rush hour which is not the case when I'm back in my mother country. There there are traffic lights absolutely everywhere. There's only one speed camera and one CCTV camera, to my knowledge, on a journey that's about 30 kilometres uh, in distance. So I don't have that fe big feeling of Big Brother is watching me over here in the way that I do in England. So that's my, my first one, is I actually really like getting from home to work. My next one is fresh bread. I think it's amazing. I I just think it's so different from that supermarket stuff that you, you get in England. It, you just you feel French as well with it, which I really, really love. Another thing I really love is that we where we live, we're out in the countryside, I see the most spectacular sunrises. And I do actually prefer them to sunsets. I really love the feeling of a new dawn. And I every every morning I kind of take another photo when there's another sunrise. And, uh, you know, there's nothing I can really do with them because I'm sure people are bored of seeing all these amazing sunrises across this beautiful view. But it is something that sets your whole day up and you think, wow, especially down here in the Côte d'Azur, how lucky are we to have about 300 days of sunshine? So, the, you know, I get 300 sunrises, amazing sunrises. Another thing I love actually down here is when we do get uh, the bad weather, which of course we do, but it is just so impressionant, as they say in French. It's just so exhilarating, those electrical light storms. Mr. Beebe has the ability to sleep through them. I really don't know how. 
I just can't. I feel so energised when the lightning is bolting across the valley and we really get a magnificent view which doesn't film at all well unfortunately but you can see it over to the west and then to the east and then ahead of you is just incredible so usually when there's a big electrical storm I'm up and about pacing the house watching it and watching the true power of nature and just just in admiration of it really another thing that I love about being in France is the vu and the two the fact that you can create distance from someone or a rapprochement, like a closening with someone, with a tweak of which person you use in your verb form, so the vu and the tu. So anyway, you get the picture. I think that it's really important to keep all the positives at the forefront of your mind. It helps you to feel more buoyant when the going gets tough. And here is another mindset tip. It's to get one of these old fashioned glass jars. You find them in car boot sales, you know, the old bocal. And every time something great happens, note it down and pop it in the jar. I found little Miss D doing this thing. She must have found it on Pinterest or something. And it was so sweet. Her jar was just filling up with all her happy memories and happy moments. And then, you know, if she was having a down moment, the idea is you dip your hand into your your little glass jar and you take one out and you read it just to give you a little boost to remind you that when you're feeling rough and when things, you know, life back in England or America or wherever feels like a lifetime ago and you're missing your mates and that kind of thing, you take out one of those great memories and it reminds you actually here is great so the idea is even when you are feeling at your lowest moment, you can draw back on that positivity and boost yourself back up. The next tip is to get creative. Go and listen to episodes 33 and 34 where we talked about creativity. It is so powerful to see evolution from your idea to something concrete. And this could be redecoration of a room at home. It might be writing a blog or go and write a book, why not? Or go and join a music class. Uh, Lizzie Parks, Vonnie Marshall Edwards both run music classes down here in the Côte d'Azur. But of course, you could also go and join French music classes. So I would extend creativity into many, many different areas of your life. It could be cultural outings. It could be going to the museums, the theatre, the ballet. Côte d'Azur, we have absolutely tons on our doorstep, but the whole of France I find to be an incredibly cultural place. Get onto your mairie, and they have very good websites now. I was, I was checking out about five of them recently as I was planning some of the outings for this summer for Adoland, and there is so much that we have here. This is such a proactive nation doing things and wanting the communities to come together. So, you have got it on your doorstep. Why don't you commit to doing one thing per month that's going to tick that creative box? Next are some kids activity recommendations. Well, firstly, I'm going to do a little thing here for Kiddoland and things that we have going on. So not to three year olds. We have mum and baby activities. We've got playgroups and kindergartens for preschoolers. And this is all in English. So if you have moved here from another English speaking country and you wanted your child to keep up your English, then this is a great way for them to do that. And they can do it with a gentle integration into life here. And we can also help them get their child ready to pass the English parts of tests into the international schools. We also run things in the holidays. So we run vacation and stage vacances and fun, creative holiday camps for school age children, age four to 12 year olds. And as I mentioned earlier, Adoland in the summer is always a fun place for those tweens and teens to be. And we're going to be doing things like architecture, photography and journalism in 2018. So this is one thing that you've got here on the Côte d'Azur, if you're lucky enough to be joining us down on the Côte d'Azur. But otherwise, you need to get onto your mairie, get onto your Bureau de Tourisme and find out what activities they have got. And again, they will have a section on the mairie website that you can go and find things for jeunesse, for the young people. Also, use Facebook. It's an incredibly useful place to find all things kids and to find groups in your area where you can get advice on choosing the right school. Now, if a positive, fun English environment isn't for you, and I know it's not for everyone, then 
do check out Requianis if you're here in the Côte d'Azur because you will find all kinds of ideas for outings with kids plus lots of bon plan, money ideas, um, offers, competitions. Hervé, the guy that runs that, he works really hard at sharing the best of what's out there for the Riviera kids. And with 27,000 likes on his Facebook page, you know that that's a really proactive place to find out more. So I'm actually thrilled to be a partner of his. You can find him on facebook.com slash recreatnice.fr and I'll put the link to that in the show notes. Down in the Côte d'Azur, we have other things like carnivals, we have the Fête des Citrons in Montan, uh, but we also have amazing things popping up everywhere. So in Cannes, I uh, can't wait to go and check out the new Jump XL trampoline because that looks totally awesome. And... We also have, getting back to nature, brilliant walks that are here. Uh, June, one of the admin in Côte d'Azur Living, is someone that's constantly plugging the walks that we can do. And she's a really great person to go and find out, you know, according to the level of person. Like, so if you're walking with a, a retiree who maybe needs to go a bit slower, then she can tell you which walks to go on. Uh, and if you're a real sporty person, um, which trails that you should be figuring on going and doing. Well, we went and did uh, the Mimosa Trail uh, a couple of weekends ago over near Tanneron. It's just this time of year right now, February, where the Mimosa comes out into full bloom. Uh, such a stunning yellow trees and s- the views down to Cannes and Mondelieu were really, really well picture postcard, really. And you had the snow capped mountains in the background. Just gorgeous. Soon too, we're going to be having the lavender fields over in Provence, which I'm hoping to get out to this year. And why am I saying this? Well, it's because getting out into the community and joining in kids' activities, going out and seeing the different fets that are there, it really gives you a sense of belonging and appreciation for this really beautiful country that we're all lucky enough to be living in. So getting out and committing to doing that every weekend, get off Facebook get out there and go and do some of that. It's um, a real treat. And I would say as well, go back into previous episodes because at the end of the interviews, my guests very often share their top tip for discovering the Côte d'Azur. And so pretty much I've got all my outings for the year sorted now. (laughs) So I mentioned earlier about finding schools. Well, I did record a couple of episodes very early on in one to four, Worth checking out uh, if you've arrived in the French Riviera with children. We are so lucky down here. We've got a great choice of schools, state, privately funded. You obviously need to do lots of research and ensure that you pick the one that works for you and your family. Well, my family, we have moved several times. So with a couple of kids, we've actually experienced two maternelles, three primary schools, two college and one lycée so far. And that was just with two kids. It sounds a bit worse than it really is. Partly it's down to natural progression. So children will always have moved among those kind of schools. But we did all we have also moved. uh, This is our third house since we moved here. So it has given us a good understanding of different processes and some of the differences across different schools. Also through my company, I've met thousands of families. I think it's about over four and a half thousand now. And I don't interrogate them, I promise. But I have, over the last 11 years, picked up a really good feel for what's out there. The pros and the cons of different systems, different schools, different areas. There are many factors that come into play from budget to location to language. And I think that the end goal is also important. So thinking about which diploma should they take? Where are they going to go to university? And of course, one of the huge factors is the child. So if you're here in the south of France, then do go and use Facebook groups like Riviera Mums and Teen Riviera to ask your questions about all things kids. And I will put links to that in the show notes. So you can either find that on the website, rivierafirefly.com slash podcasts slash 36 Or just click on the artwork in your podcast app and it should give you a little description of everything in this podcast, including the links. There are an amazing amount of mums and dads out there willing to share their experience with you and support you. It's a little bit more challenging for special needs children. 
So for this, I would guide you to the group Special Needs in France because it is quite a challenge dealing with special needs in a foreign country. They have their own processes here and ways of dealing with things. And while some of it is brilliant, there are also many challenges, including all the fact that you maybe didn't learn all that vocabulary in French when you were back at school. So this is the group that you need to be in if you have a child with a learning difficulty or special need or think that you do. It's an incredibly supportive group. So that's facebook.com slash groups slash special needs France. Finding jobs. Well, finding jobs, uh, if you weren't lucky enough to have found a job before coming here, you may need to find one once you get here. And LinkedIn is a great way to get your name out into the market. I have around 30 searches done against my profile a day. I'm not even looking for a job. And I don't really use LinkedIn that much. I sometimes use it to share information about my business and what we're doing at work. So do make sure your profile is up to date and looking for business if indeed you are. Knowing people in the companies is a great way to get that HR introduction. So building up those contacts, going to, to meetups, going to networking events. Here are a couple of groups that you could register with if you were looking for a job. The first one is French Riviera Jobs. And there's another one that I'm going to put in the link in the show notes. Online, you also have packajob.com, P-A-C-A-J-O-B.com and indeed.fr. The first one obviously covers the PACA region. Indeed seems to be more across France. Then there are also all the yacht companies. And so if boats is your biz, then take a stroll around the ports in Cannes, Antibes, Nice. Uh, that's probably one of the best ways to get your face seen and get into yachting. There are also some amazing Facebook groups. So Antibes Yacht Crew, Jobs and Yachts in Antibes are great places to start. And again, I'm going to put those links in the show notes. Making friends, as I mentioned at the top of this episode, is something that I think is really important to settling down and getting over the culture shock. Your local mairie, the town hall, will probably run a welcome to the town or welcome to the village day. They do them really fairly regularly, probably once every couple of months, and it's their moment to showcase their wares, to get to know you and for you to find out about everything that's going on in your area. So if you are planning a trip over here or you've just arrived, do find out about that and go along. Be brave. <laughs> go and do activities in French. When In the very early days, I was able to join Mr. Beebe's CE. So that's the Comité d'Entreprise. It's kind of like the, the activity club that they run in many of the bigger companies. And they extended that to spouses and kids for certain activities. So I saw that there was a photography club and... We sort of worked out the logistics between us and I used to go every now and again along for photography lessons, all in French. I also joined a hockey club down in Villeneuve-Loubet and we used to play hockey there and in cagnes sur mer And uh, that was another way for me to learn a whole new different vocabulary, uh, also keep fit and uh, and get into local French life. I've also joined dance class over the years. Uh, we've been members of the tennis club. So go and check out your local mairie. They will have a comprehensive list of all the local associations, all the people that are offering different kinds of sports and cultural activities. I'm quite fancy doing a bit of Tai Chi soon, actually. I've been looking that one up. So that might be next on my hit list. Well, kids can make it nice and easy. I am used to meet friends in the Ludotec. In fact, at one point, I was the only English girl in the maternal school um, in Gagne sur mer so all my friends were French. And I remember it was really quite hard standing outside that school gate at first. So I found it easier to invite them over for tea and coffee at my house. You know, then I could stay busy making teas and coffees and not feeling a bit of a, a spanner. <laughs> and, uh, and I made some really great friends and we used to organise going out for walks and strolls together I made friends at the swim club too and for a while I was actually on the PTA at the school because that was a way of meeting other parents and also of getting my language skills up because I can tell you that a lot of repetition in those meetings and points can be repeated many times so that really helps when you're trying to learn the language. Repetition, repetition. <laughs> I think it is difficult to get accepted and to integrate at times particularly in this area. I think people are wary of strangers 
down here in Paca. Probably because internationals are quite transient people. Just as you've got to know someone, hop, they're off and they're off to a different country and they're moving away. So it's I think people can be reticent to that. So you have to try and build that trust and, and go slowly. Animals, of course, are another way for you to meet other people. If you are into cats and dogs, dog walkers are generally really friendly to each other. And when we started dog training our puppy many moons ago, they we used to go to a centre up in Grass where we met loads of other locals doing similar things with their dogs and people were really happy to exchange information and supportive tips and sort of get out and do activities and exercises with the dogs. We've talked about this before, but the local charities are always looking for people to volunteer their time. And by doing that, you instantly enter into a very close-knit community. So we talked with Dawn Howard about all the animal refuges. But uh, there are also people-related charities down here in Paca. There are some very dynamic initiatives like Mimosa Matters and Kenyan Kids, both of which I featured on earlier podcasts. So you could go back and check them out and see if, if that might be something you want to get involved with. There's also the Unaccompanied Minors 06 and uh, Cogs for Cancer. If you have the time, they definitely have the need. And it's just such a great way for you to meet other people. It's also very rewarding to be involved in all these causes, knowing that you've made a difference and you're paying back into the community. Good for the soul. And that's going to give you a little boost in those down moments when you're missing home. So if you're looking at buying and renting a house, there are some very good Facebook groups out there, uh, which I will put in the show notes. Um, if you were looking for an equivalent to the UK site Right Move, then it's sologie.com. More and more popular now is getting it privately. So Le Bon Coin. Uh, and there is another great site, Particulier à Particulier. So that's privately to privately, which is pap.fr. I've done a combination over the years when we've been buying and selling houses. We used Anglo Info once years ago to sell um, an apartment that we had in Nice. But, uh, you know, do look into it, do get recommendations and make sure that you do your research if you are going to buy or rent privately. You can use my group Cot Does Your Living to ask for advice and for tips if you are going to go down that route just don't do something that's going to get you into problems and legal issues later on saving money well saving money it's a false assumption that everyone who moves to france is super rich of course down here in paca and bordeaux and then up in paris there are people of course that are really well off but uh, it's not everyone's case So I thought it would be quite useful to have a couple of tips in this podcast on ways that you can save some money. The first is to recycle, upcycle and to clear things out using sites like Le Bon Coin or the Facebook group Buy It, Sell It, Rent It. There's many, many Facebook groups that uh, are out there that you can sell and find pretty much anything. And I have to say, I love buying secondhand vintage items. In fact, if you looked around my home, most of the items we have have been lovingly collected over the years in the UK and here. In fact, I was having a look as I was thinking about this podcast and very few items have been bought new, including our kitchen. And I know that's not to everyone's taste, but it kind of fits my shabby chic country lived in feel. And if I'm honest with two teenagers and all their friends, two dogs, at one time six cats, many rabbits, our home has had to take its fair share of knocks and the pristine house was never really going to work for us. We're kind of more in a Blyton than Harper's Bazaar. So uh, so that kind of really works for me and I have got my very favourite places, my go-tos on Facebook that I will be going and checking things out that I can snap up as they pop up. In fact, you know, I use... Pinterest to collect my ideas a bit like a scrapbook an online scrapbook and then I keep my eyes peeled and you know I might have to wait a bit but then suddenly I'll go yes that's exactly what I saw on Pinterest that's going to go perfectly there I love a bargain I hate wasting money and so this is one of those reasons that I actually really love recycling and and repurposing things and I think it's great for the environment too 
Another money saver is WhatsApp. You can do the VOIP free calls to friends and family across the world now, which is just amazing. Personally too, I also really like free. I have it at work and at home. It's not ama- it's not the best best service in the world, but I've got to say it you get an amazing amount of service and it really is at a very affordable price. So we have many of our mobile phone contracts and our home internet and landlines and work as well are both with free. And then I think if you go into Cote d'Azur Living, you can search on things like SFR, WEEG and all the others and you can get very good feedback on um, what people think about their service. Next tip is dentists. Okay, this is an unusual tip. But did you know that if you go regularly to the dentist for maintenance, they'll often do little repairs so maybe like a cavity as a little filling and that works out a hell of a lot cheaper than going for a major repair which often isn't fully reimbursed and I've heard can be thousands and thousands so keep going to your dentist go and book one right now if you haven't been for a while another thing I would say is to check prices and get quotes in advance you can actually get quotes with your dentist and you can shop around but here I'm talking about in the house housing world so we had some building work done a while back and we had an extension done to our house and it then needed to be rendered so there were three parts this extension three walls and a hell of a lot of that was window so I didn't need a lot of render right so we had this one artisan who I'd found in the bonk actually he came over nice guy uh, had a good look round, and he quoted us to do these three walls about 10,000 euros for this work I, I you, you had to pick me up off the floor we did it in the end for around 2000 it was another artisan a locally one but I think that was our third or fourth quote in the end and I don't know if you would say it was high end the end job maybe it wasn't as thick as that first guy was planning on doing but I tell you what it does the job well it keeps us warm it keeps the wet out and it saved us around 8000 euros so particularly as a foreigner I think it's important to get quotes uh, I wouldn't say to always go to the English people, you know, try and try and understand the French and get quotes from French people too and use French companies. After all, we're here, but do shop around and do get some recommendations. Another way that I think you can save money is by online shopping. So doing click and collect. I like this for two reasons. One is that you can do a little bit of upfront meal planning and this can then be printed out and you can put it up for your family so they can see what was on the agenda and they can pick and choose and get started on making meals. I've planned in meals from home which means that I'm not tripping off to Wazawak every day when I get to work uh, because I have planned ahead and I've made sure that I've got my lunch with me when I go to work and what I like too is that you can see the total spend in your basket so I remember in the early days when we arrived here and I, you know, didn't have much to do. I hadn't set up a business here, so I had two kids and uh, a whole day ahead of me. And I really wasn't used to having all that free time. So I'd go to Carrefour and Tibe, one of the biggest hypermarkets, I think, in France. I mean, it's not so you can't pop in there, right? So you'd, well, <laughs> back in the day, I'd get there, get in the car park. And then I started looking for the trolley that I could take a baby and a toddler. Well, that just, I don't know if it exists now, but back in the day did not exist So that was always a bit of a challenge, taking the kids shopping. Uh, You could eventually get uh, something with a bit of a car seat in, but you actually had to go and give your driving license into the security guard in order to get that particular trolley, which was a big shock having been to Sainsbury's and and Tesco's where you had special designated places for you to park. Uh, Things have advanced a bit here, but not that much. Anyway, so I used to go into a car for Antibes and probably spend two hours maybe more going around there and again you'd have to pick me up off the floor when I'd see that bill sometimes 200 300 because euros because of the uh, the impulse buying as you went round. so that is why I really like click and collect it helps with planning I find it's a lot faster I don't need to uh, spend hours going around a, a supermarket and it avoids the impulse buys now I've heard Quite a few people say that they don't really trust click and collect. They prefer to choose the products themselves. Well, I've tested Le Clerc a lot for you guys. And what I love is you you rock up there and they give you the fruit and the veg to check and the eggs. 
um, before you put it in your car so that you're making sure that it hasn't gone off and that it is super fresh. Uh, but obviously, if you really, really didn't want someone else uh, picking out that stuff for you, fair enough. But you can get all your pantry goods uh, perfectly easily. And because it stores all your previous orders, it's really easy then to duplicate that order onto the next shopping Another way to save some money is to go through your existing subscriptions and ensure that you're making the most of them. And if you're not, cancel them. Remember that some places tie you in and so you can't cancel immediately. I know I got caught out on that years ago with insurance. Now, I think the law has changed and you can cancel your insurance more easily. But back in the day, you had to do it in a, in a specific window. And so... You had to check your T's and C's closely and I actually used my calendar on my computer to remind me to get that letter off and send it off for Record Monday. Back in the day it had to always be that way uh, so that I could actually cancel the household insurance that we had uh, because I wanted to change to something more efficient and cheaper. So do look at those insurance contracts and subscriptions and if you're not making the most of them, get rid of them. I don't know about you but I, I love a good book. But getting them on Amazon, uh, it can also start racking up the costs. So join your local library or your media tech and make, you know, they all have international sections these days. So you can get some really good books in there. And why not, if you have some books that you don't need anymore, why don't you donate them and pay it forward and give them to the library? Or if you're down in Packer and near mont you could go to Sunnybank, which has an amazing range of books in English. And for kids, it's just, oh, I just, it's just amazing. <laughs> go there, go with big empty bags and you know, for 30 euros, you'll come back and you'll be stocked up for the year. Also, check out Kindle on Amazon. They have amazing deals, uh, sometimes for free. I really don't get that, but you can get amazing books and literally pay peanuts for some of them and you can get it right away, which is fantastic. So I was asking Mr. BB for a tip and he had one which I didn't even know he had. It's uh, Gaswell Now, so G-A-S-O-I-L Now. It was a fuel price comparer. And he says that he uses that when he leaves Nice and he's coming home. He'll check on his route which of the pump stations has got the cheapest fuel and he'll just make sure that he travels that way. So I'll put a link to that app in the show notes so that you could check that out. There are probably many, but this is the one that he used. My final tip in this section is the Facebook groups. So facebook.com groups slash money saving France. And people are sharing tips in there. Things that you can do to check that your provider for electric, gas, phone, internet is on the best deal. Um, tips on how to bulk buy and how to get the three for the price of two deals. And there's one final web link that I will put in the show notes that helps you with uh, comparing all the different providers to make sure that you've got a great deal. So it's coming up to the month of March. Why don't you check that out and tell me in the Facebook group uh, how much money you've saved this month? Because that will spur other people on to do the same thing. OK, on to another tip I have, which is plan B. So be prepared like any good scout. And yes, I was actually a scout, not a guide. Well, I was a guide for a bit, but I found it quite boring. So I went and joined the scouts. So I believe in being planned. And in France, we have had some terrible floods and fires. And even when it snows, the roads can be closed. So it does turn to pandemonium in those situations. And it's a good idea to keep cupboard essentials, tin foods, available there in case you got snowed in or the roads got shut with floods or what have you make sure you've got your first aid kit and medical supplies there emergencies happen and do you know who to phone in an emergency the emergency numbers you know my kids actually thought it was 911 they were so used to watching american films and you know it's difficult for me even though i keep looking at the list uh, i've got them up at work I can, I can remember 999, but did you know what the pan-European number is? It is 112. Put it into your phone now. Make sure that you have always got that handy. And here are some other ones that are really important. 15 is for the SAMU. So this is for medical emergencies. It's actually answered by a doctor. So they can give you advice on the phone and they'll tell you what the best course of action is to take. 
they let you know where the closest out of hours doctor is going to be or whether you need to organize an ambulance and actually interestingly uh, a couple of years ago mr bb had some kind of ear thing going on which meant that every time he stood up he the the room was spinning and so he couldn't actually we couldn't get him in the car so i was trying to organize a doctor to come out to check him out and see what was wrong so i rang the 15 and very nice doctor helped me but actually because we're in the countryside there was nothing they could do there was no out of hours doctor where we were and would you believe it that we had to organize uh, the pompier to come so the pompier is number 18 so the fire brigade and if you're british like me that kind of seemed like real overkill i just wanted someone to come and check him out maybe give him some antibiotics if that was the thing but no <laughs> the 18 is probably the most dialed of the emergency services because they have a paramedical crew on board so they go if there's a car crash or uh, one of my other family members fell in a house on the third floor in an apartment block and we couldn't actually get in to the door and they couldn't stand up to open the door. So we, under the recommendation of the guardian of this uh, this house, they said we had to call the pompier because they also have got the equipment to break down doors and that kind of thing. So the 18, get that in your phone as well so that you've got these numbers and right beside them the reasons that you might call them now 17 is for the police for the gendarmerie so in the event of a car accident if if things are getting tricky uh, you might want to call the 17 because you might want them to come and help so solve that problem and make sure that the the constat the document that needs to be filled in in the event of an accident is done correctly now if you're not fluent french speaking note down those french phone numbers okay uh, also put your address and how you would find your address. Write it down in French so that if you were in a bit of a panic, you have got those key details to hand. My mum actually, <laughs> she uh, she writes things down and sellotapes it onto the back of her phone. <laughs> or my daughter actually slips it on the inside cover of her mobile phone uh, so that you've got it handy. Uh, in the event of a, an emergency because of course that is the moment where even if you have got really good French it might go out the window but 112 is the one that you need to remember and you can actually speak to English people if you call English speaking people if you call that number so I'm going to finish with one final thing here on settling into France is this one's for the Brits because I found a very helpful Facebook group applying for French nationality go and join that group if you're a Brit, even if you're maybe not necessarily considering joining uh, the French nationality <laughs> queue at this point. Um, but it is information that is really handy as a foreigner right now um, going through Brexit. There's been a huge increase in applications and this group is there to support you if you are going to go down that route. It may be a good thing to be starting to think about as we approach March 2019. Did you know, and I found this in this group, was one tip that uh, instead of taking the language test, which is now required if you want to apply for French nationality, you can actually do a first aid course. So it's called the PSC1 or the SST. You need to check with your local prefecture. But you can actually go and do a first aid course, which would be of enormous benefit to yourself in French. And as long as you pass it and get the certificate, this is actually also accepted as... Um, having the right level of French for your French nationality test and I really love that that you were doing something practical for something that um, is uh, rather challenging for many of us living out here as part of Brexit voila so there you go just a couple of tips for settling into France I really hope that uh, you can use our Facebook group cut as you're living if you n have any other questions and need some help settling into France and making the most out of this wonderful country. This episode was brought to you by Riviera Fire Club, your cot as you are living by your host and my mum, Antonio Bobois Andrade. Please subscribe, like and share. Until the next time, au revoir les fireflies. <laughs>